Skype and a um, kind of Skype type of scenarios. And I created a program that helps people clear stress, depression, anxiety, and live powerfully aligned. And we're talking today about guilt and the effects of guilt on the body, on the mind, on life. And I have one of my rock star clients, Pam, Pamela, who uh, I met on, online, I guess, last year, who reached yes. out to me. And uh, we're talking a little bit about guilt because um, if you're listening and you have had a history of depression or anxiety or grief, consider that you don't have a disorder and it's actually, the truth is that you actually have grief, excuse me, you actually are holding on to guilt because what I've observed is that it has devastating impacts on your body. And uh, if you're here, if you're alive, just please give us a shout out. Let, let us know where you're tuning in from. But uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about gi- guilt. Hey, there you are. Tara says hi. Um, hey, so <laughs> so what I want to do is to introduce you and say thank you for being here, uh, Pamela. You, uh, you, you've been an inspiration in your journey, and I really want everybody to really get that. So thank you for being here. Thank you thank for having, having me. me. <laughs> so let's see. Um, we started off, how, how did you first hear about me, and how did you re- reach out? reach out to me. Hey, Lucy and Diani. The first person who mentioned you was Jody Wyman, who mm-hmm. lives in the Netherlands. She used to live here in Guelph. Uh, we were chatting and she said, what would you say if I told you my IBS was gone? I said, well, <laughs> yes. And, then, and she told me about you. Cool. Yeah. Jody and I had an opportunity to do a session and we did it around the emotional creation, the emotional causes of her irritable bowel and her agoraphobia. And she bravely, publicly, we did a session and she just told the truth. And then the very next day she was able to leave and go without fear of the IBS. And she's gone through her ups and downs with it. And now she's IBS free. So she's had it for, I don't know how many decades. And so you, she introduced me to you and what were your presenting complaints and symptoms when we first just first started chatting? Well, same, same as her IBS issues, um, grief, depression, um, just overwhelming sadness. And what, yeah. what happened that you can attribute the sadness and grief and depression? Like what was going on in your life? Because I really want people to get that these disorders and diseases don't come without a story behind it. So it doesn't happen independent of the story. So what was the story? Um, oh my gosh, how far back do you want me to go? Well, no, just basically start with, you know, what happened a few years ago that really rocked everybody's world. 2014. And- was the worst year on record for my family. Uh, in April of that year, we lost my uh, brother's oldest daughter in a car accident. She was 26. And then October that year, same year, uh, my ex-husband committed suicide. Um, and you have two kids, right? How old are the kids? That's, how old were the boys at the time when this Devin, all happened? Devin was 17 and Ryan would have been 14. Right. No way. So, how did, so, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so that just rocked everybody's world. And Absolutely. what had happened from that moment until the time you reached out to me? What, what were you living like? What was life like for you? It was a struggle. It was a daily struggle. It was, I knew because the children were the ones who found their father, Devin was, Devin was sinking. He was, he was not functioning at all, which was the biggest heartbreaker for me as a mother. Yeah, to see your kid actually drowning, but there was nothing that you could do about it. I had no idea how to help him. No. Yeah. So then that's when I first, I hadn't started working with you. I started working with your son. What did you notice after your son and I started working together based on his account of the story of seeing, you know, seeing dad? He was the one who, who walked in and saw dad, didn't he? Yeah. Both of them did, but Devin protected his little brother. Um, he whisked him off upstairs and, and tried to keep him from that horror. And in doing that, took the brunt of all of it himself. And he went into a pit after that, didn't he? It, yeah, he did. He, 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 I believe he considered following his father. So then 
I just met him in August, wasn't it? Yes. And what did you notice happen after we, because uh, from a mother's perspective, what did you see from him before we started working together and then after? The biggest change was he started attending school more regularly. He was happier. He felt, he felt more, he, he realized he had a future. And how's he doing now? He's doing great. He's starting college in September. That's huge. And that's yeah. an incredible, he was one of my favorite uh, clients of 2016 to work with. And it was great to see such a transformation in him. And so it wasn't soon after, it wasn't long after when you reached out to me, wasn't it? Right. Well, I couldn't, I, I couldn't in good conscience spend the money on myself when I knew Devin was struggling so much. So I had to get him started at least anyway mm -hmm. first and then and then it was okay he seems to be good so now it's my turn and so where were you when we began with the guilt grief depression all of that and how was it impacting your body where were you at um, i was probably a rock bottom i i don't it, i don't know if it's a trauma i'm blocking but i'm having trouble <laughs> remembering being there <laughs> Tough time um, for you, wasn't it? it was and what, what was your uh, consideration of the future at the time for yourself? Because there was some stories. I mean, you can't have a passing, a suicide like that without making up some stories about the entire journey. And you guys also had a divorce at the time, didn't you? Yeah, you were divorced yeah. at the time. We so separated, yeah. what was the future like for you? What was the consideration like for you, Pam? I was my mindset as far as working goes was panic <laughs> was panicked i cannot lose my job again. and of course that's what happened twice <laughs> yeah um because i wasn't present i know why i lost my job i wasn't present i just wasn't there yeah. um understandably i mean they didn't understand obviously but i knew i know now what was going on uh, it's not because i'm not capable it's just i wasn't capable at that time. So we got together, we got to work, didn't we? We yeah. cleared some, can you talk a little bit about how guilt of your entire story impacted everything that was going on? Because, and when you're listening, when you're paying attention, you're listening, I want you to consider some of the challenges and struggles that you're going through in your life and how it could possibly be related to something that like, what Pamela's sharing as far as guilt goes. Can you share about the impact of the guilt, what it was doing to you and where you think the symptoms came from? Um, it was specifically for the IBS. Like I've tried everything to get rid of the IBS. I've tried naturopaths and doctors and uh, scopes and, you know, looking for other causes. And, and the only thing that was left was the emotional component. Um, and I believe the guilt and all of the emotional, everything that was associated with the separation and everything that went on prior to the separation. And then the subsequent suicide and, and all of that was, it was drowning me. It was, it was destroying me from the inside out for sure. And um, so our plan of attack to clear this right away was first and foremost to go after the guilt. What was that like for you? It was, um, it was the first time I'd spoken it out loud. I, I knew that that was what was in the back of my mind. Of course, I felt guilty. I felt responsible for Chris's death. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. There were some things that happened, you know, despite a restraining order and whatnot. Um, there was contact and, and my final words to him, I felt were in an email were what sent him over the edge. So yeah. you were holding on to all of this since that. And what was it like for you holding on to all that guilt to try to get to, to work, to be a mom, to be healthy? What was, it, what was it like for your health? What were you feeling like physically as a result of this? I, I think I, my body was shutting down. Yeah. It really was like, and, and I mean, even with the, with the osteoarthritis, all of that was worse. Everything, the pain was worse. The, yeah. Everything was worse. Because I want you to consider uh, guilt, what guilt actually is. It is a feeling towards yourself. So it is a self-attack. 
So it's a resentment directed inwards. So when you have a, a resentment directed inwards, it's really important for you to understand that your body is going to reflect and behave exactly in accordance to how you feel towards yourself. So if you are actually beating yourself up for something that you perceive that you did or didn't do, your body's just going to follow suit. And most of the times, from my observation, people with autoimmune disorders, people with disorders of the gut, especially, it's the body just attacking itself. And so when I was working with Pamela, our number one priority was to get her to the point where she was, we were actually clearing the guilt. And so um, what was that like for you, clearing the guilt? Was that a painless process? Oh, hell no. <laughs> I was not painless. In the, it, no. As yeah. I said, it was the first time I'd spoken those words out loud that it was my fault he was dead. And it was like someone punched me in the gut when I said it. Bingo. And so that feeling of repression you were trying to run away from for a very long time, weren't you? You didn't want to face it. You were burying it. You didn't actually want to look at it. And that was one of the you know, first few things that we, we went towards. And so now, as far as guilt goes, we're not talking about justification or who's right or who's wrong, but when you look at yourself based on your entire journey through that process, do you, are you still holding on to guilt for it? No, as I'm talking about it now, I'm observing the fact that I have no emotional response when I'm stating these things now. It's, it's, I owned it back then. Yeah. But now it's it's foreign to me. Beautiful. It's not it's not a part of me. And what's your life been like now ever since that you did this work? What's your life been like now um as far as health goes and the creation of what you're 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 up to in this world now? Yeah. It, it's day and night difference. I'm um pursuing things I never thought I would ever pursue. I, like what? My art. <laughs> and yes, so can you show us? Guys, I just, wanted, I just want to share this with you right now, okay? I want to get this. When you feel guilt, when you have that in, insane unworthiness feeling, how are you feeling about yourself and your worthiness and your deserving to step up and share your art, which is very personal, by the way. It takes a, Creativity takes courage. Sharing artwork takes a lot of courage because you're giving and you're sharing of yourself. What was it like for you, the possibility of sharing of yourself with your artwork before? It was scary. I, I didn't want to put myself out there like that. Yeah. Uh, opening myself to well, ridicule, ridicule, whatever, rejection. Yeah. Um, yeah. And now, whatever. <laughs> show us, now show us what you got. Like, I just want you guys to see this. And I'm just going to put, put, put it up right there. Look at the detail of this art. Okay, now this woman here, this woman that you see was actually at some point based on her guilt, ashamed, ashamed to put this up, ashamed to show her work and spread it with, with, with the world, with the planet, was absolutely ashamed. And all of those pieces in the back, they each have a story to them. Right. And now what are you doing? What are you noticing has happened since we've transformed these perceptions? Where are you noticing possible income streams coming from now? Um, when I post examples of what I've done, uh, people are approaching me, uh, asking me what, you know, to make stuff for them. Um, I hope this continues. I know this is going to continue. Not this hope, is continuing. It will. This is continuing. And what we did, the reason why I'm mentioning this is because once you clear the guilt, once you clear the feelings of unworthiness, once you let go of the bullshit belief that you're not worthy and that imposter syndrome clears because you've done the work with the strategic feedback and accountability and cleared your bullshit stories of guilt, you now feel worthy of and open to receiving. Because if you're holding on to a guilt pattern, you are pushing finances and prosperity completely away from you because you don't feel that you're freaking worthy of it. So once we cleared that, we've created a possibility. And for the first time in your life, you've noticed what has happened differently with your artwork that you've never had before that was never possible for you. Attention. People are noticing. People are starting to want to pay for it. Like people have always appreciated 
-hmm. what I've shared, but now people are willing to pay for it. And that's the, that's the journey of any creative who puts out their form of art, whether it be a video, whether it be a, a, a workshop or whatever, it's their, the piece of art. My, my art is the overview method and my coaching abilities and healing and transformation work. That's my art. But in order for me to get there, I have to clear the stories of unworthiness and not good enough and put myself out there risking rejection and, and, and naysayers and haters and critics. Remember, that was one of the pieces that we had to work on is like, oh, my gosh, I'm, I'm going to put myself out there. And then some people are going to have some nasty things to say about it. And, and that was what was blocking you. Yeah. from actually putting out your work and you were blocking your financial, a potential revenue stream for you. Because right, right. there's people who look at that work, uh, myself included, or a sculpture that you're making and saying, my yeah. room and my home would be um, enriched by having it there. So look at what's possible for you now when you've cleared the guilt. So uh, Tara was like, guilt is an evil beast. Nima gives you amazing tools to deal with the things life throws at us. Trust me, you will be transformed. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's very sweet of you. So do you, so what have you, what, where are you now? Let's compare to one year ago to now. What's different about you, Pamela? And what would you say to somebody who's on the fence about taking an action step, taking scary action into the void? Where are you now? And what would you say to somebody? Well, a year ago, I was floundering. I was just flip-flopping. I was just, you know, doing the usual stuff, going to the doctor, going, taking antidepressants, taking, uh, going to support groups, whatever, talking, 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 repeating all the negative stuff over and over and over and over again. Now, uh, honestly, I hardly ever talk about this. this is the first time talking about all those horrible things probably in, well, since I started actually since I wrote down my, my first, first draft for you, my shitty first draft. Mm. Um, actually, no, I, I, I did talk about it with Tara actually when we got together, but, but anyway, it, it's not the center of my life anymore. It's not the center of, it's not defining me anymore. Yeah. It's as a matter of fact, a woman came into the store today and she was just in the middle of all her, separation, divorce, whatever. And for some reason, she felt the comfortable enough to talk with me about it. Never seen her before in my life. And I did not feel the need to share my story with her, <laughs> you know, in a way of, well, this is what happened to me. <laughs> kind like of your thing. little pity party. Oh, yeah. Exactly. You think you had a tough time? Well, exactly. look at, you don't know how I got. That's one of the things. <laughs> so I just let your her victim, go. Your victim story from the past. Yeah, exactly. and essentially, that victim story is weighing you down. And the victim story can be towards yourself, even through the form of guilt. And the guilt is actually destroying all facets of your life, crippling you financially, your health, everything. And the, the, the cool part about it is that it can be transformed very quickly with the right guide. Um, so what would you say to somebody who is, what would you say to somebody who's on the fence? Um, was this worth it? Would you do it all over again? What's, Absolutely. you know? This is wor totally worth it. The, it works. And the reason it works is because you're the one doing it. It's your life. You're the one transforming. You know, yes, Dr. Neiman and his team are there to support you every step of the way. And, and their expertise and their intelligence uh, supports you and helps you and carries you. Not carries you, but... but guides you. Guides you. Yeah. Uh, but... You, as you say, you have skin in the game. Even if you pay not a cent, the skin in the game is the rest of your life. Yeah. You do the work. You're the one making the transformation. That's why it works. That's why it sticks. Yeah, beautiful. It's, it's retraining your brain. You're, you're learning to think in a different way. Yeah, completely. And getting yourself powerfully aligned with your North Star and understanding and appreciating that not everybody else is supposed to like you, but you're here to create. And um, I'm just so grateful to have you and your son uh, as part of my journey as well, because you guys have been so pivotal. Just to be able to watch an entire family transform has been a big, big gift for me to be able to participate. And so thank you for that, Pamela. I appreciate you for that.
I like to say any time, but I hope we never go through that again. <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally. <laughs> So those of you who are actually on the fence and you actually want to, you know that you've been holding on to guilt. If you go to that link that's uh, provided there, bepowerfullyaligned.com slash apply, I set aside some time to discuss with you. Um, it's not for those who are wanting to stay stuck in a story. Please don't. This is not for you. It's not for everybody. It's for people who are ready to be confronted by your bullshit lies that you're telling yourself and you're, you're wanting somebody to hold your feet to the fire and push you to the highest version of yourself. And so it's gonna take work, it's not without discomfort, but results are actually guaranteed, not to treat disorders, but to get you realigned with yourself, purposeful, and seeing a brighter future. Because the truth of the matter, the truth of the matter is in that entire, entire story, um, if you are holding on to any guilt, if you're holding on to any stories from your past, it's blocking you from being able to achieve. And so it is my highest value. It is my, my absolute pleasure to be able to make a contribution to people and, and, and see transformation. So I love doing it. And I'm so grateful to, to you, Pamela, for, for being there. So reach out. If you have any questions, send me a personal message. And I'd love to get into to conversation with you to see if what you're going through is transformable without the use of medications, without treating disorders or without it worrying about diagnoses, getting you to the highest version of yourself will heal you in all mind and body matters. So thank you, Pamela. Thank you. Awesome. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.